On to intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces are involved in associations other than bonding. They are also called van der Waals forces. They are weaker than bonding forces because they typically involve smaller charges that are farther apart. Van der Waals distance is the closest one atom can approach another identical atom not bonded to it, as shown here. Van der Waals radii, or half of the Van der Waals distance, decrease across a period and increase down a group, just as covalent radii do. The covalent radius of an element is always less than its van der Waals radius. Recall the bonding forces. We have the ionic bonds. This is the attraction of a cation and an ion. Here, what is important is the Coulomb's law, wherein the force of attraction is directly proportional to the charges of the particles and inversely proportional to the distance between them. Covalent bonding involves the nuclei and the shared electron pairs. And metallic bonding have cations and the localized electrons. The first type of intermolecular forces is ion dipole forces. This is formed by an ion and a nearby polar molecule as they attract each other. For example, is when water molecules overcome the attractions between ions in solution. When you dissolve sodium chloride in water, water molecules separates these ions and surrounds them until they no longer attract each other. The attractive forces of water molecules and the ions involve ion dipole forces. In dipole dipole forces, the positive pole of one molecule attracts the negative pole of another. In the case of acetaldehyde, the bond between carbon and oxygen is polar. There is a partial negative charge on oxygen and a partial positive charge on carbon. This polar bond results in a dipole. And in the presence of another molecule of acetaldehyde, dipole-dipole forces occur. The partial negative charge is attracted the partial positive charge of the other molecule. For compounds of similar size and molar mass, the greater the dipole moment, the greater the dipole-dipole forces between the molecules, and so the more energy it takes to separate them. As shown in this plot, dipole moment increases from left to right. In the same way, the boiling point increases as well. Take note that these molecules have nearly the same molar masses. Thus, higher dipole moment translates to higher melting and boiling points. Hydrogen bond is a special dipole-dipole force between molecules that have a hydrogen atom bonded to a small, highly electronegative atom with lone electron pairs, that is, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. The bonded hydrogen is highly positive because of the electronegative atom bonded to it. 
and allows the lone pair of the other nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine to come close. Take note that hydrogen bonding only occurs on these situations. Hydrogen bonds between molecules require more energy to break. Hydrogen bonding has profound impact on melting and boiling points. In this plot of boiling points, with atoms of the same groups bonded to hydrogen, you will notice a downtrend from H2TE, H2SE, and H2S. We can say the same thing for HI, HBR, HCl. In fact, in the case of stanane, germane, silane, and methane, there is an obvious trend. However, the hydrogen bonding breaks the trend and water has a very high boiling point. If we are to extrapolate this boiling trend, water should have boiling point at this level. And yet, hydrogen bonding allows water to exhibit a higher boiling point. We can say the same thing for hydrogen fluoride and ammonia. When melting points are compared, the trends are very similar. Which of the following substances exhibits hydrogen bonding? For those that do, draw molecules of the substance with the hydrogen bonds between them. Letter A is ethane. The molecular structure of ethane is this one. There are no oxygen, nitrogen or fluorine present. Therefore, it does not exhibit hydrogen bonding. Letter B is methanol. Here, a hydrogen is bonded to the oxygen. Hydrogen bonding is possible in this substance. In the presence of another molecule of methanol, the oxygen, the hydrogen, and the oxygen in another molecule can form hydrogen bonding. Letter C is acetamide. In acetamide, there is oxygen and nitrogen present. Hence, hydrogen bonding can occur with this substance. The hydrogen bonded to nitrogen in one molecule of acetamide can form hydrogen bond with the oxygen of another. Another hydrogen bond is possible when the hydrogen bonded to the nitrogen in acetamide forms a hydrogen bond with the nitrogen in another acetamide molecule. Explain the melting points of the following. We can compare the melting point of this compound to the melting point of this compound. Here the melting point is 388 degrees Celsius and this melting point can be attributed to hydrogen bonding. Now why is the melting point of this substance lower than the melting point of this one? Here internal hydrogen bonding can occur. This oxygen and this hydrogen can form an intramolecular hydrogen bond. Intramolecular hydrogen bond tends to limit the intermolecular hydrogen bonding between molecules, which has a large effect on melting point. Here, intermolecular hydrogen bonding 
can occur quite easily. And so, the melting point here is quite large. What about these two compounds? This compound has two oxygen atoms and they are present at opposite ends of the molecule. This arrangement enables the partial cancellation of bond dipoles within the molecule. In this other compound, the oxygen are on the same side of the molecule and thus in this case dipole moment is oriented at this direction. As a result of the higher dipole moment expected for this compound, it has a higher melting point compared to this one. The higher melting point of this compound compared to this compound can be attributed to the larger molar mass and the higher dispersion forces that are present. In charge-induced dipole forces, a nearby electric field induces an electron cloud distortion, thereby altering the dipole property of the molecule. Take note that the ease with which the electron cloud can be distorted is called its polarizability. For example, in the presence of a dipole, a nonpolar substance can be polarized and induced to have a dipole property. Smaller atoms or ions are less polarizable than larger ones. And ions, being bigger, are more polarizable than their parent atoms. How about cations? Cations are smaller than their parent atoms. Hence, cations should be less polarizable. There are two types of charge-induced dipole forces. One is ion-induced dipole forces, wherein the electric field comes from the ion. And the other is dipole-induced dipole forces, wherein the electric field comes from a dipole. The last type of intermolecular forces are dispersion forces or London forces. These are momentary oscillations of electron charge in atoms and present between all particles. Instantaneous dipole results from non-uniform distribution of electrons at an instant. Separated argon atoms can form dipoles. We call them instantaneous dipoles as they come close to each other. The instantaneous dipole in one atom or molecule can induce a dipole in its neighbor. Hence, attraction can result even in nonpolar substances. Dispersion forces are very weak for small particles, but are much stronger for larger particles. If we compare the noble gases, there's a general increase in boiling points as their size increases. This can be attributed to the increasing strength of dispersion forces. Dispersion forces cause sufficient attraction that allows nonpolar substances to condense and solidify. Hexane is a nonpolar substance, and yet it is liquid at room temperature. They contribute to the overall energy of attraction of all substances. In HCl, 85% 
of the total energy of attraction is due to dispersion forces and only 15% due to dipole-dipole forces. For nonpolar substances with the same molar mass, shapes that allow more points of contact have more area over which electron clouds can be distorted, so stronger attractions result. In the case here for plantain, there are more points of contact for dispersion forces to act. If we compare it to another molecule called neopentane, neopentane has the same molecular formula as pentane. The shape of neopentane allows for fewer points for dispersion forces to act. Hence, the boiling point of neopentane is only 9.5 degrees Celsius, despite having the same molar mass as pentane. In summary, we have ion dipole forces. This is based on ionic charge and dipole charge. Hydrogen bonding. This occurs in polar bonds to hydrogen and the dipole charge. We have dipole dipole. There's ion induced dipole where the ion charge is attracted to a polarizable electron cloud. We have dipole-induced dipole, where a dipole charge is attracted to a polarizable electron cloud. And dispersion forces, the attraction between polarizable electron clouds. The trends in energy usually decreases in the order shown. Exercise 5. For each pair of substances, identify the key intermolecular forces in each substance and select the substance with higher boiling point. Letter A. Magnesium chloride or phosphorus trichloride. Magnesium chloride is an ionic substance, whereas Phosphorus trichloride is a compound with molecules attracted to each other by van der Waals forces. Here, you can expect that magnesium chloride has a higher boiling point compared to phosphorus trichloride by virtue of its ion-ion interaction. Methylamine or methyl fluoride Hydrogen bonding can occur in methylamine but not in methyl fluoride, where dipole-dipole forces can be expected. Hence, the boiling point of methylamine should be higher. Methanol and Ethanol Both methanol and ethanol exhibit hydrogen bonding. However, ethanol is a bigger molecule and has a higher tendency for dispersion forces to act. Hence, you can expect that ethanol has a higher boiling point than methanol. Hexane or 2,2-dimethylbutane. Hexane is a linear molecule whereas 2,2-dimethylbutane is a bit spherical. There are more chances for dispersion forces to act for a linear molecule, hence hexane should have a higher boiling point. 